Hi there, welcome to the Seaside Lane channel. I'm Morgan Lane, I'm a mama to three little girls, a wife to a firefighter, the author and illustrator of A Little Prayer Devo, an artist and a happy homemaker, and most of all, a big lover of Jesus. My prayer is you'd find encouragement here and you'd join me and get up and clean together to serve our families, making our hearts and homes a haven. In today's video, you'll find me getting ready for the day, doing a whole house reset, including laundry, dishes, cleaning rooms, bathrooms, and much more. Then you'll find me arranging some roses for my morning ladies' Bible study. I hope to give each woman one. Then at the end, I'll be painting in my Bible a beautiful rose next to the Lord's Prayer from Matthew chapter 6. As a mom to three little ones, I've found lots of benefits in getting ready in the morning. It starts the day off right. I'm much less lazy if I'm out of my pajamas, I have my hair done, a little bit of makeup on, and I put on a dress. It's a self-esteem booster. I automatically feel put together and ready for whatever comes at me during the day. Taking care of myself and taking that few minutes allows me to take care of my family better. I'm always ready for the unexpected. If a kid forgets their backpack and I have to run back home and bring it to the front office, I'm already ready, put together, poised for the day. I started tidying the master bedroom. Then I came across the Easter eggs because we're going to have a hunt for all the kids in the neighborhood. I like to start with my room because it resets first and is a place that I'll retreat to in the evening. Whenever I start the day, I always do a load of laundry. These were the washcloths that I washed last night and dried this morning. In past videos, I've mentioned how when I do laundry and dishes, I often pray for my family. And in preparing to lead a Bible study this week, I was talking about prayer. The verse I shared with the ladies is, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from e evil. Matthew 6, 9 through 13. I'll talk more about this later when I paint in my Bible, but I just wanted to share with you as you clean to start thinking about prayer. Think about your prayer life, where you're most likely to pray, how you pray, and how it can help us commune and connect with our Creator. I pin back my hair and get to making the bed. It's often said that making the bed sets the intention to do the little things that bring an orderly, thoughtful, responsible, balanced, and successful life. In addition to providing a quick sense of daily accomplishment, some people find it calming as well. About a month ago, my husband and I browsed the bookstore Kid Free and Unrushed, the best gift. His white book up on the headboard is The Twelve Rules of Life by Jordan Peterson. He's a Canadian clinical psychologist. He provides life advice through essays and abstract and ethical principles on psychology, religion, and personal anecdotes. He's halfway done with it and loves it. My big fat pink book that was on the headboard is Little Woman, It's My Favorite by Louisa May Alcott. This edition was so cute, it was pink with little flower deta details. It also had Little Men and Joe's Boys. I was really excited to find my favorite three books all in one. Falling asleep to the simplicity of in play and learning of the nurturing mothers in these stories is really relaxing. I've devoured one and a half books just in the past month as I doze off at night. I thought the only laundry that I had to do was the rags that I folded from the dryer, but then I stumbled upon some in the rocking chair, so I had to take care of that. Next, I moved on to the master bathroom. This bathroom probably gets used the most out of all of them, so I try to keep it organized and keep the cabinets and drawers clean and tidy so when my kids need a band-aid or something from underneath the cabinets, they're easily able to find it. My little two daughters' rooms is probably the room I rarely go into or avoid because they are messy. They are little kids and they're toddlers and they love pink and animals and fluff and toys but on occasion i'll make their beds and tidy and look make it look nice and it's great because when they come home they have this feeling of excitement and wonder and joy as they see all their things tidied 
Also, my daughter has been known to try to emulate the same, so on the weekend or if she has enough time in the morning, she'll do her best to try to make it just like me, and it's so cute when she's so proud and she comes to find me, and everything's tidy but a little bit askew, and she says, just like you, Mama, I did it, look. A quote by Barbara Cage goes like this. A daughter is a bundle of firsts that excite and delight. Giggles that come from deep inside and are always contagious. Everything wonderful and precious and your love for her knows no bounds. I feel like I'm constantly thanking the Lord that I get to experience this times three every single day. The endless giggles and all the play. I move on to tidying up their desk, which I let them do a lot of art on. You can see the art all over the table and some yellow paint on the wall. They have a lot of fun painting in their Bibles and painting different crafts. Often when I enter the girls' zones, I tend to start praying for them. I speak their names and I think about things that they love and that they're struggling with, and I pray over them. I don't think there's a morning that I stand in Sunday service and I pray for all the leaders that are pouring into them and that their hearts and minds would be softened and open to all the things that the Lord has to teach them as they grow in relationship with them. I debated cutting this tiny clip out because it's dark in the back of a closet and it looks like a bomb went off. But this is real motherhood. This is the mess. This is two tiny girls trying to decide what to wear and they can't pick it out in the morning. Each girl only has four drawers in the dresser. I found that laundry can get overwhelming with little kids trying on things and wearing it an hour and tossing it in the basket. But my one secret is to keep inventory low. They each only get four drawers. We have big tubs that they swap out and rotate, so if they want different outfits, they can. But the ones that they have access to, we keep limited. That way we all don't get overwhelmed by the amount of things. With the top floor tidied, I descend the stairs with my rags. I shove the pile back into the drawer. On to cleaning up the morning mess of the kitchen. This balloon has been in our house for a month, and it's endless amusement. The girls had ice skating this morning, so I tried to make breakfast, but most of it didn't get eaten. To our dogs, a very great pleasure. I then discovered the reason why there are so many eggs left. My kindergartner got distracted, drawing in her Bible. She drew some doodles and wrote about God being gracious and merciful. It was so cute. I moved it over to the bar with the box of crayons so she could finish drawing it when she would get back from her lessons. Yes, we have a white table with three young kids, however, I found it to be the best ever because there's nothing that a little bit of bleach and a magic eraser cannot take off of this table. I can get it looking like new at the end of every project. They got back from the ice rink and my oldest was a little bit jealous that I had tidied her sister's rooms, but I didn't have time to get to hers. So we decided to work together to make the task happen. She took funny before photos and videos of what it looked like and decided she was on a mission to get it as clean as her sisters so she could take funny, vo funny videos and photos afterwards showing how clean it is. I often find this is a really good motivator for her to visually see the difference. She says, ah, oh, look how good it looks. This is her video of the rug in her feet and dad walking by. Even though it was now closer to lunchtime, I finally made my way to the kitchen to work on the breakfast dishes. A mom in her kitchen trying to get everything in order before the next meal is coming. The doorbell had rang like three times this morning. I was a little flustered by the neighborhood kids constantly knocking, but by the third time, they handed this flower to my husband and they said, we just want to give this to Mrs. Lane. We can't wait for the egg hunt later today. And then it was okay that the doorbell kept ringing. Wiping down the coffee and the eggs, I knew that pretty soon this counter would be smeared with sandwiches and peanut butter and bread and all the items of lunch. But that's what mamas do. We just keep going, we keep cleaning, we keep serving, we keep loving, and we stop and ask for help from our family when we need it. Here's your reminder, if you're a busy mom, go hydrate, drink some water. I have this massive jug and I always drink. Go get yourself some water, your body needs it. I placed my happy little flower from the neighborhood kids in a jar, and then I moved on to doing the dishes. At that exact moment, my middle one decided to hop on the counter and grab our Alexa because she wanted to have a dance party. I 
As I started scrubbing these dishes, my heart wandered to the next morning. I would be meeting with some ladies in my neighborhood and would be talking about prayer. When I scrub, my brain tends to get creative. I check out and I clean the dishes, but I either get creative or pray for people. I was trying to think of something that would make everybody remember to pray this week. My idea was to get a dozen roses and trim them up pretty and have everybody pick one out and give it to the woman sitting beside them and to tell them that they would be praying for them this week every time they saw their rose sitting on their kitchen counter or in their bathroom by where they brush their teeth, but that the rose would be a reminder to pray for one another throughout our week. I usually just let the dishes air dry, but on this occasion, we were having an egg hunt in the afternoon, and I sort of just assumed that some of our friends would come over and fellowship and talk and all the kids would play. I wanted the counter to be clear, so that way everybody could relax and have time to chat together. I recently had vacuumed and mopped the whole house, but I decided to make the rug fluffy and put some scented baking soda down so the room would smell fresh. Next I went into my daughter's bathroom, and for some reason the hooks always come unhooked. I don't know how forceful kids are, but for some reason the thing goes flying every time she goes in there. As I was scurrying about through the morning, going room to room, I began to think about Hebrews 10.24. The New Living Translation says it like this. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to act of love and good works, and let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return draws near. Opening your heart, or your home, or both, or even if it's not at your home, just your heart, at a park or somewhere with other people, it always has so many benefits gathering with other believers and having conversations about the things that the Lord is teaching you and how he's moving and changing and how you can encourage one another. I knew that this would happen after the Easter egg hunt. It did. We had friends come over and we had some great chats. Then I started to prepare the roses for the next morning. That way the women in the Bible study can have one. I love the colors of these. My daughters picked these ones over the red. They decided that the pink and coral and the yellow were a much better choice than the, the lovey red flowers. I've seen quite a few roses blooming in my neighborhood lately. They make me smile. They make me think of summer's simple sensation that's rising up, that winter's ending, and that summer's coming. Not that Florida has different seasons, really, but they do bloom in the neighborhood, and I think they're beautiful. Next, I'm moving on to my Bible. This bright yellow note card is actually my own version of the Lord's Prayer. I go line by line through the Lord's Prayer and write it in my own words. On Easter Sunday, my mom shared this little teacup with me. She said I could have it and that it was my grandmother's. I think it's my favorite one so far because it's covered with daisies, which are my very favorite. I decided to sketch a rose in my Bible next to my version of the Lord's Prayer because a rose is what I gave all the women in my group as we all wrote out our own version of the Lord's Prayer. I've done this time and time again since my kids were little. I start at the first line, Our Father in Heaven. Then I write it in my own way. If I feel anxious, I feel tired, I feel searching, I write my Prince of Peace, my Healer. If I feel exuberant and excited, I'll call him King of Kings or Yahweh. So I go line by line and I open it out. First I address who he is, and then it says, Hallowed be your name. You come and you praise him and you tell him how holy he is. So what I would do is go line by line and write out what the Lord is leading me by his example of prayer in the Lord's Prayer. The one on my yellow note card goes like this. My Prince of Peace, you are holy and mighty, and you know all things. Heaven is perfect, bring it here through me. Make your will clear and true. Use me for the holy and supernatural warfare. Thank you for the word of God, my daily bread, and the food on my table for my family. Make my heart clean and pure, and give me patience for my children. Just being honest. <laughs> Guard my heart, mind, home, body, physically, mentally, and spiritually. Make them pure and lovely. Thank you. I love you. Amen. Bye, friends. Thanks for joining me today.